Well, hey, my name is Ryan Earnhardt from creativesoundlab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. Well, we're gonna be doing a tour of the guitar amp wall behind me today. Uh, this is a very popular request that I get a lot. Uh, give me a tour of your studio. So I'm breaking it down into a couple different parts. Today is on the guitar amps. A lot of these guitar amps have a story behind them, but they are something that is an incredible tool that is a great source of tone and uh, unique sounds. So let's get started. Okay, so a little bit about a few of these amps. And a lot of them have their own story. A lot of them I've purchased uh, kind of as a, a group buy. Um, and a few of them are not mine. So uh, you have uh, things that are just kind of hanging out here at the studio, uh, which is fine by me. Um, it uh, is great to have amps uh, laying around that I can use, that I can keep running. Um, all the amps really need to be exercised at least um, what I try to do is once a month. So uh, once a month, I fire it up for a couple hours, just making sure that you know some current is going through, put some heat in the amps. Um, but yeah, so first on uh, on this shelf here is uh, the Lafayette LA75. It is uh, probably mid 60s, best guess, and it is great for any sort of uh, blues slide guitar. Harmonica would be amazing through this. Um, anything that's really thick and kind of very overdriven and um, very, very rock and roll, okay? Uh, big, thick sound coming out of this amp. Uh, in particular, um, Violent Red, um, we used uh, this amp, I believe. Then we have the uh, Gibson Scout. Um, you'll see a lot of these floating around, the Gibson Falcon. Um, some of them have tremolo, some of them have reverb, and uh, e I think EQ maybe is, is, is a big difference. Uh, Mid-60s, best I can tell for this guy. Um, it's got a, uh, an Oxford speaker in it. The speaker that was in here was some organ speaker and it never sounded good. It had a huge peak, like it really brittle. It was like 3K, it was just like hurting your ears. And put in the Oxford 10 inch speaker and it had a very gritty, sandy type texture to it. So a really, really cool amp now that I switched out the speaker. And it, it also affects how the amp plays a little bit. So. Uh, it, it pushes that speaker even harder. You get more coloration. Before, it was almost like the speaker wasn't being pushed at all. And so you had an amp that kind of sounded cold all the time. So uh, tremolo is amazing on this. Uh, really, really nice deep tremolo. Uh, and the reverb will play when the volume's all the way down. So you can turn up the reverb and have the amp all the way off, essentially. And it sounds really... Uh, really cool. So uh, great for reamping just for the reverb if you need just the reverb. Uh, this guy here is something that I, I haven't even featured yet on the show and it is a, um, it's out of a, a, a Wurlitzer 4070. Um, I got the, I got the, the organ. Um, it was actually a solid state organ, but it was right at say late sixties when they just transitioned, um, into, you know, you know, transistors and things. So, um, you know, I wasn't sure there was some big caps that kind of looked like maybe there was, you know, it was a big cover over maybe a tube or something. Sure enough, my amp tech eventually disassembled it when the thing started to kind of blow up and make a bunch of noise one day. So we went ahead and retired the organ and he confirmed, yeah, it's actually just solid state. But it's a four, um, 4070, okay? And a lot of this stuff I might get wrong. So, hey, you know, give me some grace. But uh, 4070. And it's not the only model that has these. 
Uh, they're really cool. Um, it has some sort of resistance tone shaping device on on this on this side of it. Um, I've just completely ignored that, and I've gone for the pair of wires coming out the other side. Um, and what this does is you plug this into a small low wattage amp, and this spins around, and it's got a speaker on this side and the back and you get a true Doppler effect. Uh, it's not like um, maybe Leslie where uh, you have something being deflected. You have actually something physically moving around and creating the effect itself. Silent rain, hard on the ground. I wish I could find shelter from the storm. So uh, next is the Music Man, uh, what is it, 112RD65. Um, I still have the speaker, the Electro Voice speaker that goes with this, um, but for now I put in an organ speaker um, to replace it. It's a great amp for lots of different options for tone. Um, you know, it does a really good distortion. Um, it's kind of a hybrid setup. So I believe that the, I want to say that the output put stage is tube, but uh, it is, there's some solid state components in this amp. Um, but it still sounds very good. It's a very heavy amp physically. Um, you can quickly get a lot of different tones. I've done a lot of reamping for clients over the internet, getting this amp. Um, and getting a lot of different tones for their entire project. So it's a nice, versatile amp. Uh, and then this here is a, uh, a Gretsch uh, 6156. Um, it has a um, tremolo. The tremolo sounds really cool. The owner of this amp, uh, Flint Ziegler, he actually has a tube that's about burnt out. For some reason, it doesn't produce enough uh, of whatever voltage, and it's a really, really weak tremolo, so I saved that um, that tube, put in a different tube, and uh, just to just to save his special tube for that tremolo. Really great amp for, um, gosh, uh, about any kind of tone. It, it's got a really unique breakup. It's very classic um, to the Gretsch sound. So uh, Led Zeppelin, the Supro amps that they're coming out still have that tone. Um, it's it's got that tone. Lost, gone for quite some time. It's hard to keep the faith. You're not by my side. It's hard to know you mind. When will you come home? When will I see you? Um, up top is something really special, um, and it is my kind of go-to secret weapon for vocal reamping. And um, it's a Harmony H303A, but it's a really cool amp for vocal specifically. It doesn't really compress that much, but it still kind of distorts. Six inch speaker, uh, great for any sort of distorted vocal and uh, harmonica. Um, it's not a very big amp at all. Um, really cool tones out of that thing. Uh, this here is kind of your uh, bread and butter, typical Fender sound. Um, Silverface uh, Champ, uh, 70s, I forget the date on this. Um, for some reason, I, lately I've been having a problem with like finding a sweet spot on the mic or maybe there's some, a little bit of buzz in the speaker or something. Um, so I haven't gotten as much use out of this, but the um, the tone of this amp is just incredible. It's probably something just 
very small with the speaker, uh, something or the baffle is not secure in it. So I, I have to have my friend look at it. But the tone is, is really incredible, really simple amp. Um, so that's the Fender Champ uh, Silverface. Uh, this is a uh, some sort of kit build. Um, uh, I think it's Dyne Electro. It's like a, a takeoff of Dan Electro. Uh, really unique breakup. Really gnarly sounding. And that's about all I have to say about that one. <laughs> uh, just it, it either works or it doesn't. This here is a, a Gibson, I want to say a BR6, perhaps. Um, it's got a really old speaker. It's really old. This is the oldest amp in here. Um, very, very good for single line melodies and songs, um, hooks of songs. Um, some really cool grit, but good bottom end that sounds like the amp's going to like shake apart kind of. Um, very kind of sensitive amp, very almost uh, very paper-like in a way. Um, so really great for hooks and things like that. Um, this guy right here is a, a Pro Junior. And the Pro Junior is not the same as the Blues Junior. The Pro Junior is simplified. So instead of having like the fat button, you just have tone and gain. It is great for um, if you warm it up for about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, I've heard people say that this is the overdrive tone that they're trying to get that they never can get ever until they heard this amp. Um, it's got to be hot, uh, but it's a really great amp for overdrive. The next amp is um, a Dan Electro. Um, Oh, what do they call this? I forget, but I'll put a title. Um, really cool amp, um, a leader, a leader amp, I, I believe. Um, probably in the 50s at some point. Um, very, very good for any sort of blues type tone. Um, oh, lots of overdrive. The amp actually has a really cool um, caving in sound when you really push it hard. It almost implodes on itself. Um, so really cool tones out of that guy. And so far, I mean, everything here, I mean, there's a few more expensive guys, but I mean, you know, Probably, probably these are under 500 or right at 500. Um, this one, the the Gretsch, maybe a little more. Um, this one's I've seen for cheap, and uh, you know they're 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 not crazy expensive amps, really. Um, I I I actually have available to me um, through a friend, um, you know, a um, a Princeton Reverb. Um, which sounds very nice, uh, a brown deluxe, which sounds obviously very nice. Um, but these are not in that league, but they still have a lot of really cool tone, okay? Um, and so if you can find something like this guy or this guy or, or even the Gibson Scout, um, they're, they're a really, really cool tone that you just can't get without, you know, having the amp. Okay, now on the floor here, weighing in at about 100 pounds and 180 watts of power is the Fender Super Twin. It is um, really overpowered for what it is. Um, I don't really use it as a guitar amp. I use it as a bass amp. Uh, a lot of bass players are uh, snatching these up and converting them into bass heads. Uh, I believe the head for the Bandmaster is the same um, width as this amp. And so you can put this in a bandmaster head, plop it on top of a, um, a, a bass guitar um, cabinet, and have a really nice uh, rig. So uh, this is really what I use for bass reamping, and it gives me a, enough compression naturally through the use of tubes and the speaker um, to really make bass sit really, really nicely in a mix. Then over here, we have a 
uh, Fender Bassman 59 reissue. Uh, this thing has seen quite a bit of traveling, and um, it's it's really it's really in pretty rough shape, but it does do a great job of breaking up nicely um, when pushed to about 50% on the gain or higher. Um, it, it, it does have a really nice breakup, kind of a Ryan Adams kind of thing. Uh, great for uh, great for any sort of Les Paul tone, SG tone. Um, probably would struggle with some uh, teletone, to be honest. Um, I probably would um, have to fidget with it to get it to sound right um, if I was trying to overdrive it with a tele. Um, but it's a really loud amp, so at some point it kind of doesn't matter if you're wearing earmuffs and you're just cranking it. Um, really, really pretty, a, a good adaptable amp for guitar tone, um, not the most amazing overdrive. Um, it's very kind of standard sounding, um, but a really, uh, a really good amp overall. I held a truant's hand Close to the windowsill Watched the coming storm Put fear in the ocean You gotta leave him I'm on your mind Intentions brought on from years and years of searching. Okay, so that was just a little bit about the guitar amps that I use here at the studio. And this wasn't just an episode just to say, hey, look at me and all my crap, but instead it was to stress the mindset of like, there is really cool tones available out there, and they don't all have to cost as much money as like a, a vintage AC30 or something like that. Um, the little uh, harmony amp that I use for vocal reamping, I actually saw that recently on Craigslist for $100 and it was on there for close to two or three months. You can have a unique effect with its own uh, input, its own tubes, its own speaker, all of which you can change out, all of which has its own little story from the era that it was designed and built. Uh, so a lot of these amps are really affordable, really cool ways to find unique tones. The download today, I'm offering up my top three amps. If you're looking to get into this, amps that you can be looking for. And a lot of these amps have families. So, you know, slight variations, some with tremolo, some without tremolo. And so if you can find something in the family of some of these amps, they're a really great find. It's available right now. Uh, available for you to view and download within seconds of clicking. So if you want to check out my top three amps you should be looking out for, if you want to be getting into some cool and unique tones, go ahead and check that out. I'll see you next week.